In this lesson, we want to review solving quadratic equations by factoring. So in this section of the course, we're going to review how to solve quadratic equations. So for most of you that took lower level algebra courses, you already understand that there are multiple methods to kind of achieve this task. The easiest case scenario is when we can solve a quadratic equation using factoring, okay? But we cannot use this method every time, so we've got to have other tools like completing the square and the quadratic formula. So we'll talk about those other methods over the course of the next few videos. In this lesson, we want to focus on just solving quadratic equations by factoring. So first and foremost, let's explain standard form for a quadratic equation. So in your textbook, when you first start talking about quadratic equations, you'll see something like this. We have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And we basically restrict a, the coefficient of x squared, and we say it can't be equal to zero. And the reason for that lies in the definition of a quadratic equation. With a quadratic equation, you have a variable like x that's squared, and you don't have a variable that's raised to a higher power. So you don't have like x cubed or x to the fourth power or anything like that. So x squared, the two is the highest exponential power on the variable. When you work with a quadratic equation, it's also known as a second degree equation for that reason, right? Because again, the highest exponential power is a two. When we think about a polynomial, if the highest power on the variable is a two, it's known as a second degree polynomial. When we look at these guys, we could say a, b, and c could be any real number, with that one exception that a is not equal to zero. So something like 5x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals zero. Or something like, let's say, 3x squared plus, you could have 0x plus 2 equals zero. And this guy right here, this plus 0x, I can get rid of that and just say this is plus 2 equals zero. Okay, so this is still a quadratic equation because I've still got my variable raised to the second power, so it still fits that definition, okay? And similarly, I could just put something like plus 5x equals zero. I don't have to have a constant term. That could just be zero. The main thing here is to understand how to write this in standard form. So this is in standard form, this is in standard form, and this is obviously in standard form here. So let me kind of notate this. This is standard form, okay? So you want it as a, some coefficient of x squared, plus b, some coefficient of x, plus c, the constant, is equal to zero. Okay, zero is going to be on one side, everything else is on the other. In order to solve a quadratic equation by factoring, we have to understand something known as the zero product property, aka the zero factor property. Okay, so those are the same thing. This tells us that if two real numbers are multiplied together and the result is zero, so something like a multiplied by b equals zero, then essentially one of the following possibilities has to be true. We could have that a is equal to zero and b does not equal zero. So something like, let's say a is zero and b is, let's say two. Zero times two is obviously zero, right? Zero times anything is zero. It could also be true that a is not equal to zero and b is zero. So let's say a is negative five and b is zero. This still gives us zero. Lastly, you could have that a is equal to zero and b is equal to zero. So it could be we have zero times zero and that is obviously zero. Okay, so this is the kind of math behind what we're going to do today. This is in its simplest form. We're going to look at it in a more complex form. And to kind of see this, let's first start out by working through this problem. So we have x squared plus 4x equals x plus 28. So we want to solve this quadratic equation by factoring, meaning we want to find the values for x that make it into a true statement. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to write it in standard form. So my ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. Now, it doesn't matter which side zero is on, but typically you'll see zero on the right side and everything else on the left. So let's just kind of follow that. So to accomplish this, I'm going to use my addition property of equality. I'm gonna subtract 28 away from each side of the equation. I'm also gonna subtract x away from each side of the equation. So on the right side, this is all gonna cancel and just become zero. On the left side, I have my x squared, and then I have 4x minus x, so that's plus 3x. And then I have my minus 28. And of course, this is equal to, we already said the right side is 0. So now it's in the format of ax squared, in this case, a is just 1, plus bx, in this case, b is 3, plus c, in this case, c is negative 28. Okay, so this equals 0. All right, so now that we have it in standard form, 
we want to factor it, okay? We want to factor it. So let's drag this up here and let's see how we can factor this. If it's a trinomial, we're trying to factor this into the product of two binomials. This is our easiest case scenario. So we have x squared here. So this would be x and this would be x. And I just need to work out what is this and what is this? So give me two integers whose sum is three and whose product is negative 28. Well, for positive 28, it's only one times 28 or four times seven, okay? If you think about one and 28, there's no way to play with the signs and make that work. You can't get a sum of positive three. But if you play with the signs with seven and four, you can make it work. If I had a positive seven and a negative four, seven times negative four is negative 28, seven minus four is positive three, okay? So now that we have factored the left side of this guy, what I wanna do is think about, again, my zero product property. If A times B equals zero, then A can be zero and B cannot. B could be zero and A cannot, or A and B could both be zero. Well, it's the same thing here. You've gotta realize that these guys are factors. The quantity X plus seven is multiplying the quantity X minus four. So these are factors. These are factors, okay? So make sure you understand that. So if I find a value for X, that when plugged in here and here, let's just say makes this guy into zero, well, zero times whatever this is will give me zero. Same thing over here. If I find a value for X that makes this guy into zero, zero times whatever this is would also give me zero. So essentially, I just wanna set each factor equal to zero, and I wanna solve and find out what that value is. Those values will be solutions for my equation, okay? So I'm gonna start out with X plus seven, that's one of my factors, and I'm just gonna set that equal to zero. Very easy to solve this. I just subtract seven away from each side of the equation. I get that X is equal to negative seven. So let me just kind of put this over here. We'll say that X is equal to negative seven. That's one of the solutions. I'll put a comma since I have a second solution. The other scenario is that X minus four equals zero. So X minus four equals zero. So I can add four to each side of the equation and I'll get that X is equal to four. Okay, so let me put a four right there. Now, when we check this, I wanna show you in this kind of factored form what happens. Let's start out by checking x equals negative seven. If I plugged in a negative seven for x there, what happens? You're gonna have a negative seven plus a seven, and then over here, you're gonna have a negative seven minus a four, and then of course, this is equal to zero. Negative seven plus seven is zero. So this is where the magic happens. You have zero times, doesn't matter what this is over here, it's gonna work, right? Because zero times anything is just zero. Negative seven minus four is negative 11. Zero times negative 11 is zero. So you get zero equals zero. So we can go ahead and check this guy off and say it does work, right? Negative seven is the solution. And you can also check that in the original equation if you'd like. I'm not gonna go through that just for the sake of time, but you can pause the video and plug in a negative seven here, here, and here and you'll see that you do get the same value on the left as you get on the right. Let's also check four in the factored form. So if I plugged in a four there and there, what would I get? Well, on the left side, I get four plus seven, which is 11. On the right side, I get four minus four, which is zero. 11 times zero is again zero. So you get zero equals zero. So this results in a true statement. So this one works out as well. So our two solutions here are that x equals negative seven or x equals four. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have 77x is equal to, you've got negative 15x squared minus three x minus 105. So again, I wanna write this in standard form. So we want ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. So essentially I want one side of the equation to be zero. And to accomplish this, I can just subtract 77x away from each side of the equation. On the left, I would just have zero. So zero is equal to, you'd have your negative 15x squared, negative three x minus 77x is minus 80x, and then you'd have your minus 105. So let's scroll down a little bit. Now, there's two things here. Most people like their zero to be on the right. There's nothing wrong with just kind of flipping this around and saying this is negative 15x squared, minus 80x minus 105 is equal to zero. Okay, that's perfectly legal. The other thing is you have negatives for each term here. If you don't wanna deal with that when you're factoring, you can use your multiplication property of equality here. 
you can multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1. Multiplying 0 by negative 1 will still be 0. So if I multiply 0 by negative 1, I still have 0. If I multiply each term here by negative 1, I'm going to just change the sign. So I would have 15x squared plus 80x plus 105. Okay. So now this will be a little bit easier to factor. So now that we've written in standard form, we're ready to factor the left-hand side here. So the first thing I notice is that everything is divisible by 5 on the left. So we can go ahead and pull that out. That would give me a 3x squared plus a 16x plus 21, and this is equal to 0. All right, so we need to keep factoring here. So if we would have 5 times, I'll set up my parentheses. I know that this number here is prime, this 3, that's the coefficient for x squared. I'll do 3x and x. And now I just need to work out these two parts right here, okay? The outer and the inner have to sum to 16x, and the last have to give me a product of 21. So I need two of those integers that's going to fit the criteria there. Well, if I think about 21, this kind of final term here, it's only 1 times 21 or 7 times 3. So there's no way to make it work with 1 and 21, right? 1 and 21, no matter what I do, it would just be too large of a sum. But with 7 and 3, I might be able to make that work. I can't put my 7 here because 7 times 3 would be 21. That's already larger than 16, so that doesn't work. I'd have to put a 7 here and a 3 here. So does that work? Well, yeah, it does. Because my outer here would be 9x, and my inner here would be 7x. 9x plus 7x is 16x. So this is the correct factorization. All right, so once we have it in a factored form, Remember what we did last time. We took each factor and we set it equal to 0. Well, here we have a factor of 5. We don't need to set that equal to 0 because that would just be nonsense. So we would kind of be more specific here and say we're going to set each factor with a variable in it equal to 0, and we're going to solve. So let's go ahead and take this left one first. So 3x plus 7 is equal to 0. We would subtract 7 away from each side of the equation. We'll get that 3x is equal to negative 7. We will divide both sides by 3, and we'll find that x is equal to negative 7 thirds, okay? Let me just kind of write that over here. We'll say that x equals negative 7 thirds, and then we'll have another value for x that works. So let's work on this guy over here on the right. So now we have x plus 3. We're going to set that equal to 0. And we're just going to subtract 3 away from each side of the equation. We'll get that x is equal to negative 3. Okay, so x could be equal to negative 7 thirds, or it could also be equal to negative 3. Each of those would work as a solution to the original equation. In the interest of time, I'm not going to check it, but again, you can pause the video, go back to the original equation, plug in a negative 7 thirds for each occurrence of x, and also a negative 3 for each occurrence of x, and verify that the left and the right sides are equal. All right, let's take a look at another. So we have negative 1 plus 7x is equal to negative 2x squared minus 4. So again, I want this in standard form. So ax squared, ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0. Okay. It helps if you write it out and you can kind of look at it and see what you need to do. So I am going to basically follow this format and have 0 on the right-hand side. So I'm just going to add 2x squared to both sides of the equation. And I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. So this is going to cancel. So the right-hand side is just going to be a 0. Okay, on the left hand side, I'll have my 2x squared, and then you have 7x, so plus 7x, and you got negative 1 plus 4, which is going to be plus 3, and again, this is equal to 0. So now that I have it in standard form, I can go ahead and factor the left hand side, and this guy again is pretty easy to factor because this part right here is a prime number. So I'll go ahead and set this up, we'll have our 2x and our x. So now I just need to work out this and this, right? Again, we want this times this plus this times this to give me this middle term, this 7x. So what are the factors of 3? Well, it's only 1 and 3, so it's not very hard here. You can either put plus 3 here and plus 1 here. That obviously doesn't work. You'd end up with 2x plus 3x, which is 5x. So it has to be true if it's factorable that a 3 would go here and a 1 would go here, and that does work, right? 2x times 3 is 6x. And then 1 times x is 1x, so this ends up being 7x, which is the correct middle term when you do that sum, okay? So we factor this guy, and now we're going to set it equal to 0. 
And again, we're just going to use our zero product property. So this guy right here, we're going to set this equal to zero. Let's start with that. So 2x plus 1 is equal to zero. Let's subtract 1 away from each side of the equation. We will get that 2x is equal to negative 1. We will take this 2x is equal to negative 1 and divide both sides by 2. We'll get that x is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so let's say x equals negative 1 half. And then the other solution comes from this guy on the right. So this factor here, this x plus 3, if I set that equal to 0, so x plus 3 equals 0, subtract 3 away from each side of the equation, you get x is equal to negative 3. Okay, so negative 3 goes here as well. So my two solutions here, we have that x equals negative 1 half, and then also x can be negative 3. All right, let's look at one that's not a quadratic equation. And the reason it's not a quadratic equation is because we have x raised to the third power here. So that would violate our definition. But it's important to know that you can use this technique for any equation if it's factored, okay? So it doesn't have to be a quadratic equation. So we have x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x plus 12 equals 0. And we know if we have a four-term polynomial, we want to try to factor this using the grouping method. So from the first group, I can see that I can pull out an x squared. That would give me an x minus a 3. From this group here, to match this, I would pull out a negative 4, and that would give me an x minus a 3, and this equals 0. Of course, my common binomial factor here is the x minus 3, okay? So this ends up giving me my x minus 3, and then times the quantity x squared minus 4, and this equals 0. So at this point, we're not actually done factoring because the x squared minus 4 part is the difference of two squares. So we want to factor this all the way. So let's put x minus 3, and then times, this guy would factor into x plus 2 times x minus 2, and again, this equals 0. So all we're doing now is we're taking each factor and setting it equal to 0. So x minus 3 is equal to 0. We add 3 to each side of the equation. We get x is equal to 3. Okay, so that's one solution. So x is equal to 3. Another solution, we have x plus 2 is equal to 0. Subtract 2 away from each side of the equation. This cancels, you get x is equal to negative 2. So that's another solution. And then a lot of you can guess that the final solution is x equals 2. But for the sake of completeness, let's just do it. So x minus 2 equals 0. Add 2 to each side of the equation. If this cancels, you get x is equal to 2. So that's our last solution. So here, x can be 3, it can be negative 2, and it can be 2.